Hello, my name is Mel Philbrook, and I would like to welcome you to another Frontier Precision Tech Talk. In today's session, we will show you how to set up real-time settings for Trimble TerraSync software. An overview of today's Tech Talk session will show you how to adjust settings for real-time data collection under the Setup menu how to make necessary settings adjustments to your logging settings, coordinate system, units, and most importantly, we'll show you how to make the necessary settings adjustments under real-time settings. We'll then show you how to verify your real-time status and also how to verify your receiver status. So let's get going on this tech talk. You're currently looking at a Trimble field device running Trimble TerraSync software. We're presently under the main menu setup, and our first adjustments will be made to the section Logging Settings by pressing the radial. Once in Logging Settings, we'll be making adjustments to the Accuracy Settings presently set up for horizontal post process. By clicking on the wrench, we can make adjustments to the accuracy value for display. Currently it's set to horizontal, but you could use vertical if you are using a high accuracy GIS device for underground location or hydraulic work. In today's example, we'll use horizontal. Since we are going to be running real time, we're not concerned with post process accuracies, but in the field, real time accuracies. The next adjustment we'll make is under user accuracy based logging. By changing this to yes, you can actually specify the required accuracy to be met. And if these accuracies are not met real time, your feature will not be able to be stored. However, for today's demonstration, we will not be using accuracy based logging. So we're going to change that back to no. To double check our values, we're going to show our accuracies for horizontal in the field and no accuracy based logging and click done to save these changes or edits to the setup. The next area we're going to make a change to is point vertex auto pause count. I recommend changing this to 10 and by doing so, when you shoot points or vertexes, it will auto pause at a count of 10 positions. The next settings adjustment we'll make is to the antenna height by clicking on the wrench. You would need to key in the proper antenna height. In today's demonstration, we're going to be using a Frontier Precision FPI G8 antenna, and so the correct antenna height is 2.0536 meters. We'll confirm this per file, typically. However, you can choose per feature if you're using an adjustable rod. But in today's example, we're using a standard two meter carbon fiber pole. Under the type, you need to change it to the proper antenna. Typically for a GNS operation, you would use a Trimble Zephyr or Zephyr Model 2. But as I mentioned, we're going to be choose unknown external because we're using our own FPI G8 antenna, GNSS antenna. Click done to save those changes. There are no other necessary changes, so click done to save the changes in the logging settings area. The next section of adjustments will be under the coordinate system by pressing the radial we're not going to be operating in latitude and longitude, which is WGS-84, but operating on a U.S. state plane coordinate system. Today, we'll be checking into NGS opus-derived coordinates. That operates, that datum operates in a U.S. state plane 1983-2011. So we need to match it to say U.S. state plane 83-2011 and be in the proper zone, which is Colorado Central. Because we're going to be checking things vertically, I want to change my altitude reference to MSL, or mean sea level, 
so I will show orthometric heights. Because these NGS coordinates were keyed in, US state plane and metric values from the OPUS sheet, we're going to leave the altitude units set to metric or meters. Where you have divine, defined a geoid model, which is geoid 12A, which is the proper geoid that needs to be paired with NAT 832011. And the coordinate units, are, again, are going to be left at metric or meters because the control file was keyed in as such. Click Done to save those settings. Now we're going to make necessary adjustments to the units section by clicking on the units radial. Here's where you can make changes to the distance units, area units, velocity units. You can see that presently our distance unit is set up for meters. And so when we check into control, you'll see that the display will be showing metric values. There are no other necessary changes here, so we're going to click Done to confirm those settings. We're now going to make adjustments under the real-time settings. And presently, you can see we're using uncorrected GNSS. And we're going to now choose external source as our real-time source. The second choice will be use uncorrected GNSS. The correction datum is presently set up for WGS84, or WGS1984, which means zero transformation. That means there will not be any type of correction datum transformation. Since we're operating in NAT83 2011, we could choose NAT83 CONUS, but that would be a zero transformation. So when we choose NAT83 CONUS, again, like WGS84, that is a zero transformation. However, in today's example, our real-time source is operating on a transformation or a datum that's different than what we're trying to tie into. So we do need to apply a real-time datum transformation by applying a NAT83 CONUS CORS96 transformation. Under type, we're going to be operating off of VRS, so we will choose VRS. Under connection method, we need to choose to use internet. By choosing internet, you now have an IP and a port. Well, we need to key in the necessary or correct IP address and port to be able to hit the VRS. Under source, you need to click the wrench to build the internet or server table. Since this is a high accuracy GIS data collection, we would typically operate in either CMRX or RTCM31, which is full GNSS, not GPS only. We're going to choose to use the RTCM 3.1 in today's example and click Done. You're now required to key in the username and necessary password since this VRS is, entrant, is using MTRIP protection. Under connection control, we recommend switching it from the default of auto and use manual. This is uh, especially important if you move from different IP addresses. It just forces the connection, which you'll see here. All the changes have been made, so we press Done. The last change you want to make is change the real-time age limit to the lowest possible, which is 15 seconds, and press Done to save the changes. You now notice that the external source button is not automatically depressed. By pushing in the button, we now started the external source. 
we switch the main menu from status to real time and you now see that your connection time is up you're receiving data and that your last correction is two seconds latency and our accuracy in the upper right hand corner has gone from meters down to five centimeters the last thing we're going to verify is under status receiver that we are receiving carrier corrections if you choose a wrong single base source or VRS source and that it says code corrections you're not receiving carrier corrections you're receiving code corrections and you must be receiving carrier corrections in order to do high accuracy data collection and as you can see our connection time is increasing and our accuracy is dri drifted down to two centimeters in conclusion we've shown you how to adjust settings for a high accuracy GIS real-time data collection under the setup menu how to make necessary adjustments for logging settings coordinate system units in real-time settings and how those settings can affect you and your ability to hit known control points we've shown you how to verify your real-time status that you are connected to a single base or VRS real-time source and we also showed you how to verify your receiver status that you are receiving carrier corrections that are needed for a high accuracy GIS data collection in real time this concludes our frontier precision tech talk on how to set up real-time settings for Trimble TerraSync software hopefully you have found this beneficial and will join us again next time.